Riding down Highway 61 Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield Feel it as soon as I ride into town This is where I go to slow Brad Chapel here, Crappie Connection. We're at the Crappie Compound in Como, Mississippi, at Mr. Les Smith's place. He got a pretty nice place, don't he? Really does. And the eating <laughs> is, beautiful. is phenomenal. Yeah, I think I've gained about four pounds in two days. Yeah, I've been trying to diet, but it ain't been working too well. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let each one of you guys introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from and what you do. So, Chris Mann from uh, eastern part of Kentucky. Uh, up around Wellington, Kentucky. Uh, I'm actually a pro staff manager for Crappie Magnet and oversee their advertising as well. And I uh, got several of our sponsors here this weekend that, that we're representing uh, here at this Sore Lip of Mall giveaway. And yeah. uh, uh, so just blessed to be around some of the best fishermen in the world, man. Guys, I fun. looked up to when I was a kid and dreamed about meeting and knowing and getting to come here and, and uh, dine with them and hang out man what a blessing so absolutely good, good times what about this fella <laughs> i'm john harrison i'm from calhoun city mississippi uh i run jh guide service and have for a long time uh i've been well blessed and be around you know good fishermen and you know we good information to try to help these younger people coming along you know that trying to promote crappie fishing you know what's even amazing that i've seen in the last couple of years is people our age that's getting into crappie fishing yeah, yeah that i took a guy yesterday that he's like man when COVID hit i kind of got the fishing bug because i don't have anything else to do but i'm still trying to learn sure yeah. sure and you know he didn't have a live scope he hadn't bought that yet and he probably will be but we want to kind of cover and i think of both of you guys both of them are very successful tournament anglers fishermen in general but i, I want to kind of think about the basics of fishing standing timber and that's why we got both you guys on here today oh, old school crappie fishing old school yeah, yeah. old yeah. school that's what and i'm i'm part of it yeah old school. Yep. you know i know both you guys can do it really well and you know when you go to these new lakes or even your older lakes that you're fishing and you're looking at standing timber what do you see that you don't think the normal guy is seeing yeah. because a lot of guys when they pull up to a lake and you just see standing timber you just see some wood standing out there yeah do you try to look at different things when it comes to standing timber and say I, hey that might be a good one i, I do i i've always you know if i pull up to a thicket i'll try to look at the ends of it or or something in that thicket like a, a tree with limbs on it you know or, you know, you always going to have one in there that kind of stands out from the rest of them. Might be a little smaller with, you know, a few limbs on it. And seem like to me, you know, or a little short one. It won't, some may not be big as your thumb sticking up versus a great old big one. I've never had much success just fishing, you know, big stand-in timber. It's always something, you know, just small stands out there, a little scattered stuff, you know, by itself. Yeah. Always targeted, you know, that more you know I, i'm wondering about this john on that because i've seen the same thing you know over the years and i've always wondered if maybe it was a deal where that crappie likes to be able to see out from behind that piece of structure so maybe they don't get yeah you know, maybe gar or, for whatever yeah. reason you know predators yeah. or whatever catfish gar he can see yeah. you know but he'll nose right up to it you know so you wouldn't look if you look at a big patch i guess is a good terminology yeah, thicket of timber 
yeah. stick it a timber you don't want to go in there and say hey i think that big stump's probably going to be the best one in there you, no. you they don't come to mind to use mm-hmm. kind of the smaller pieces in. yeah smaller smaller wood and and like i call them doubles you know if you'll find you two real close together mm-hmm. that crappie you know you've, you've been through there and you you know since live scope now but used to i would look for a double or a you know three real close together and put right over in the middle and always when you you know you pitch out past it and let it come right through that middle you know he'd always you know catch one and you know that always stuck with you you know and when you know in the summer months when you look and you'd see two real close together and most time you know i take for grenada example i had places you know in them same old doubles and triples every year when it got hot they'd it'd be one old big one down in them you know yep. so i mean that's just sort of what i look for and you know, and as you know, just old school fishing, I guess. Yeah. What about you, Chris? What is, kind of comes to mind with that? Hey, he's hitting right on the head. You know, a lot of times if you get those doubles and triples that are yeah. together, they're small. You know, small ones. Um, I always like to look for those ones. If you think about a stake bed and how good they yeah. are drawing fish, well, the same thing happens with standing timber. The smaller the diameter, a lot of times, the more of those fish you know pack in. And um, you know, the subtleties. Just looking for something different. A lot of times, it's those. Uh, edges those hard edges of standing timber where maybe there's creek channel and and you know you got a hard edge and you run down through it and a lot of times it'll seem like those fish you know hang out on that edge um I'll, I'll tell you something this weekend as we came down here to fish you know sardis i've never been on sardis before first oh, time fishing congratulations yeah it, it's actually a great you know awesome yeah. fishery and as it come down to, you know some of the guys were saying they're live scopers and they were saying the fish aren't on standing timber and I looked out across through there and I'm like, boy, you mean to tell me out of four million standing trees, there's not a fish on this standing timber? And of course, you know, I went in and improved within 10 minutes that, yeah, there's some fish on standing yeah. timber. And I think you guys that's been fishing for a lot of years, you all recognize that to be true. There's always going to be a certain amount oh, yeah. of fish mm-hmm. that's on it, um, which is good news for non live scopers. Yeah. yeah. You know, guys, just something saying, hey, easy to identify and go 100%. to. Just like today, I mean, we had, we, we had a live scope on, but. I mean, you could have uh, old school some of those thickets. You know, we wasn't any in the opening, but when you pulled up to those thickets and you look in, you know, and there's three, well, I'd about know it was one in there before I ever put that live scope on it. You know, I would have. I think John can smell them. Just old yeah, school pitched in yeah. there. Yeah. But I'd look, and sure enough, there's one or two in there. So, you know, I mean, I fished for years out here with no live scope, and I always had, oh, you know, I'd spend the whole mm-hmm. summer up here fishing, just thicket to thicket. To th- some yeah. thickets, you know, you wouldn't be as good as that next thicket or, you know, the next one, you know. You just, I'd just keep going till you'd find them. Uh, and, and where he's at today, they might, you know, be in a different thicket over there tomorrow or something, you know. Uh, last Thursday, uh, me and a buddy of mine was up here pre-fishing for a tournament, I said, you know, I want to look at that thicket at each end of it, not the middle, but each end, little stuff, Just real tight stuff. I always would catch a big one in there. We didn't catch a big one in there from, well, 12 to 14 inches, but you could old school just, you know, just pitched out past them, and some of them would be one or two snags with nothing, and then all of a sudden you'd look, and there'd be four or five around two snags, you know, just a, they just schooling right around the ends of those uh snags you know and if you'd have been old school i'd have just sat there and pitched them and let it you know pendle by there till i got them all well i'd have thought i got them all anyway (laughs) (laughs) you wouldn't have known any better yeah i wouldn't have known no better i want to i'm gonna put kind of both of you on the spot on this one and i want you to kind of think of your home lakes the ones that you've fished the most through the years and i want you to kind of describe because i know everybody i have a particular place in my mind that i like that i've fished through the years that i've I'm always going to check that I always have confidence that that's a fish catching tree. And I want you to describe one of those situations that you might have at your home lake and kind of describe that scenario. Yeah. Um, I, I had several come to mind, you know, and, yeah. and, and I would say this, you know, what probably made us prior to live scope, you know, have any success on fishing, standing t- timber and tournament trail fishing was the fact that we, we did a technique called run and gun. Yeah. I mean, you, you have those places, and not only do you have the one honey hole, you hopefully have 10 of those honey holes that you're going to hit in quick succession throughout the day, you know, and, and stay on the move. 
Uh, but one characteristic that I notice uh, a similarity of most trees in standing timber, if you find that horizontal limb that comes off that tree, mm -hmm. um, you know, used to, we would use 2D sonar to find that. Um, mainly you found it by hanging up, yeah. it, you know, and mm -hmm. you'd stay hung up and you'd think, oh, that burn, you know, this thing's sticky, but it's always holding a hog in there. And, uh, you know, that'd be the place you went. And of course now with live scope, we can see a lot of times on those horizontal limbs, there may be multiple fish hanging off on, on those things. Um, and why they love that so much, I don't really know, but they do. And You know, I remember, uh, and a buddy of ours, uh, Hugh Crutes, I remember years ago, he was talking about fishing standing timber, and he said, you know, you look for that, that horizontal limbs mm -hmm. because in the heat of the summer they're kind of like humans they're looking for this is not word for word but they're looking for shade they're yeah, trying to get out yeah, of that heat they're trying to get that's... in that little cooler yeah, spot yeah. Could very well be it John, little you dark got, spot little yeah dark spot you, you know. got a, a scenario that comes to mind on grenada that say well, hey this is one of my favorite well, pieces yeah. of standing timber yeah you know and, and, and i need a spot it, can't remember <laughs> yeah, that. it's yeah, not coming to mind yeah you know like carver's point yeah uh used to it you'd see a few trees in there and 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 over around red grass those old trees when the water would get up at a certain level you know they i guess there was old cypress and they was bushy like big as this table and limbs coming out everywhere you know and if you could just get that jig down in them you know for what they it's gonna hold them i mean it they're there you know and it didn't matter when oh, you man. went you was you knowed when you pulled up there if just if you could get him out they was gonna be in there uh, same way over on the schooner side, that old fence row, it comes way out there. You know, all the limbs are about gone now, but there's still, a, you know, you can still go by there now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and if, it, if you find one of them with a few old limbs on it down there, they about rotted off through the years. But, you know, I'm back up 20 years ago and I'd go right there and get in that fence row and go down it. I'd, I'd, I'd get the limit was 30. I'd, I'd, I might not get them all out, but I stayed till I got my 30 just back and forth. You couldn't catch them all out of there. You yeah. know, if you could get them out, you might have to move up to a 15-pound test line or a quarter-ounce jig to get them out. But, you know, they was down in there, and they just, I mean, that's just seemed like every fish in the lake would just congregate right there. It didn't matter when you went. If you could fish it, you could, you could going to catch yeah. them. What about, I want to go into, you know, somebody starting out, and that's kind of what my mindset, you know, when we're talking about the standing timber today is, I want to go out and I want to get me the basics to go out there and fish standing timber. And I want you to go from line to pole selection, even length. I mean, people don't necessarily say, well, there's so much selection in poles now. Yeah. And there's great poles that's available to everybody. But what size would you say, hey, this guy's just starting out. What would you suggest for a beginner to get out there and say, hey, this would be a good combination for this guy? I, I always liked a 12 foot you know a long pole because you know in the summertime or whatever you you know you more than likely you're going to be fishing deep just according to water clarity you know uh 12 foot I, i'd say a 12 foot my my choice is a bbul that buck's best ultralight 12 foot it's light and you fit you know i mean it just pitches good and i use a six eight pound gamma line and uh, most time I'll I'll use something like this right here. I, I'll take a sixteenth or something that floats real slow to get me down. Uh, that uh, crappie magnet or uh, uh, curly tail. A lot of times, you know, when you pitch out past that tree and it comes down, he'll he'll give you more of a reaction strike. He'll come and find that. You know, if he can uh, locate it quick. Yeah, yeah. He'll come find that. You know, if you fish it slow and let it go down. That reaction of that curly tail will catch them when you know when you just drop it straight down on them it won't i'd rather pitch yeah. it out and let it kind of pendle by you know uh you know that's, that's what about reels i mean this is something that i really hadn't discussed a lot and like i said i'm thinking of a guy that doesn't have anything yeah yeah and 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 well, you know spinning reel a zepco something or is light light uh b&m yeah. makes a, a great little uh uh band one band two you know a little old any kind of light you want as light as you can get if you're pitching you know all day you want to you know you want a good light reel on that on just that a little spinning reel. just any little spinning reel or a little mini reel or something you know just something to hold, really it holds your line that's all yeah. about all you need absolutely what comes to your mind um i'll say this probably beginning in the and when i cut my teeth on a on a 10 foot bgjp yeah you know uh, the great for most of us did stand yeah. timber yeah and I can't think of one probably any better than to start out. Uh, it gives you that length you need. 
Um, I think of a lake like uh, Truman up in Missouri. Oh, yeah. So much, you know, these uh, bow dark trees and things. It's got so many limbs on them, and you're trying to weed through there. You know, that length helps you to be able to get up to it. Yeah. Um, some of those trees are so thick, man, you're, you're bumping with the trolling motor before you can, you know, actually get to the best part of the tree. Uh, so long rod really helps. Um, say this uh, high test line, 8 to 10 pound, when you're, when you're in that super thick standing mm -hmm. timber with a lot of limbs, is really going to help you that allow you know straighten out a jig and uh, you know straight out a hook on yep. a jig if you get hung up um I'm, I'm like john when it comes to jig heads um you know kind of lighter for those uh, those scenarios 16th ounce eighth ounce when you're fishing around the standing timber um not so necessary that you get something super heavy unless you get so thick you can't yep. get it down through there you know and uh, John mentioned that earlier about yeah. sometimes it gets so thick you have to have I, to heavy weight I, it. I've, I've been around, you know, when that water would get real high at Grenada and getting those old ironwood bushes. And them fish just shade in there, and they get right in the middle of them. What a way to get them out. Right. And I, I said one day, I said, I'm coming back tomorrow. I'm going to get them out. And I put some 17-pound test on a BGJP with a tip had been broken. I put me another one on it. It was still, you know, and, and a quarter-ounce jig. I didn't get as many bites. But what I got, I come yeah. out of there with them, you know. I mean, when I when I felt a bump, I'd come out with them. But, yeah. you know, jig poles is all up. They've come a long way. Oh, I yeah. mean, when I first started, it's been a long time ago, but uh, we used a little jewel. It didn't have no eyes oh, yeah. on it. We just tie the string. You know, we just guess and get us, you know, two. If it's in the fall, we'd get or spring, we'd get two foot of line, and that's we just tie it to the end, and that's what we, you know, put a jig on. We fish the same depth all the time. And, uh in the summertime, I you know we'd tie ten or twelve foot on it and pitch it out there, you know, and, and fish with it. We didn't know no difference, so we didn't have nothing no different, you know. But yeah. you know, poles has come a long way through the years. You know, and Chris, I we're gonna let you finish on this. What kind of reel? I mean, it's I'm thinking, yeah. you know, what what's something easy for somebody to really get out yeah. there and learn how to use? I, I think you know about any what a, what we call a thousand series reel you know that size reel something small um definitely uh, i'm going to suggest a spinning reel uh, you know some of these guys are using bait casters now you know yep. um, where they're not doing a lot of reel and they're just you know basically ham feeding the line in there um i don't have an issue with that but i will say this it, that's a little bit harder to pull off in thick standing structure in my opinion uh, as you're weeding you know weeding back through there and you're trying to you got your line pulled right. out and you're trying to do this uh, i like to just take that stick it back in there flip the bail straight drop down, down drop down pretty easy um i will say this brad and, and this is a product that that crappie magnet came out with uh, that i think is a must have for standing timber fishermen Absolutely. especially novice new beginner anglers uh, one of the biggest things that's a detriment to people going and fishing standing timber is they think i'm going to stay hung the whole time that i fish and john i know when when i cut our teeth on that we didn't have this option available i'm going to tell you how we used to get our hooks hung go ahead <laughs> Pro, <laughs> run, the, run the rod you, down the you, line years ago this is how I learned when I was a little boy. I'd see elderly women, I won't call them whole women, but we'd stand up on a bridge fishing with cane poles. We we made our own reels, you know, and we took uh, coat hangers and clip them in pieces about like that and take a pair of wire pliers and turn them and tape them to the your cane pole and make your eyes. Break the tip wow. of it off, for a, you know, and just bend it double for your end eye. So they get a hook hung. You think they'd break it? Because they use most of the time they use it was called Meals In fifty pound test line. Yeah. Meals In little cheap spool. They get their hook hung, and everybody used a four rod eagle claw with a big metal. They took a coffee can, or any kind of can, old can of peas or butter beans or yeah. whatever. They cut the bottom out of that. They'd slide that can over that butt end of that pole, and shake that. And that can would go all um, all the way down that pole, all the way down that line. And when it got full of water as it goes down and hits that hook, they'd jerk it two or three times. They'd undo that hook. They'd pull that can back out, set the can back down, go back to fish it. Huh. They never would lose a hook. It was amazing to see it. They never yeah. broke a line or never I lost never a I've never heard pin. of that one. I, that's I watched I can it. see it, though. I, I watched it a many a day when that people would line up on that bridge and they'd get their hook hung. They'd just take that can yeah. and put it over it and... And that can would go down that end of that pole, go down that line. That's cool. Of course, you know when it hits that water, that can's gonna get heavy. Yeah. 
it's it's no i mean and when it gets to the end they jerk it a few times like that yeah i've seen my grandmother do it a hundred times yeah. and they they'd come out pull That's that can cool. back out and it you know when it when that can's hitting that mm. full of water hitting that hook it's pushing Knocking that you it jerk off. it pulls it right off you know because yep. they didn't just set the hook hard but yeah when they went to pull it and it, it was hung in a you know a, an old yeah and uh, uh ironwood top you know that's what most time was fishing off of those bridge you know they'd fish off the bridge they wouldn't lose no hook yeah. no i mean <laughs> no they wouldn't no wasn't way they're gonna yeah, lose no cool. hook. right but they they and a lot of times they'd pull that can out still have their mineral on there you know yeah. that, that is hooked right in there try it sometime it works every time and that's <laughs> you know hey i don't that's need a minute. Now, yeah. Though. yeah that's a, i mean that's about <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's the same concept and yeah it's, it's the same yeah. concept right there really cool Just slide it's, right down you know you don't have to go over the rod you don't have to go through the reel but uh uh, this is just a cylindrical piece of lead. It's got a plastic insert with a slit in it. Uh, put that on your line, uh, make a turn. It locks your line, that on your line. Uh, you send it straight down, it hits the head of that jig and knocks it loose from when you get hung up. Uh, super cheap, I think we sell three of these, uh, you know, eight bucks or something. It's gonna save you a ton of lures. Most importantly, it's gonna jig keep heads you- Jig heads are high. Yeah, jig heads are high. And the other piece is, especially, uh, you know, when you're fishing your favorite piece of structure, you get in there and you get hung up and you start pulling and yanking on that, trying mm-hmm. to get your lure loose. You're gonna scare the fish out of that pile, man. Uh, this thing will keep that from happening and uh must have for beginners new guys yeah absolutely another thing it'll do it'll you know keep you from getting so frustrated when you're breaking off and have to retie every five minutes man nobody nobody wants to do that it's not going to be long before people say i'd rather fish open water with a float yeah that was me that was me and i tell people and that's really that's really guided the the whole style of a lot of people's fishing because standing timber that was me the structure i tell people all the time you know when i'm fishing in the spring if you ain't getting your hook on you ain't in the right spot <laughs> right. so it don't worry about getting hung you know yeah. yep. and you know a lot of times you get hung and i'm i'm just world worse pull it up to the end and punch it out you're gonna break them tips like 20 25 dollars for a tip because yep. you're gonna punch a little harder than you think you're gonna you, you are you know i can get it out and yep. you're gonna get aggravated it won't come yep. when you pick your hook up you're gonna have that much of your tip broke off yep. it's gonna cost you 25 what about bucks. knots you know somebody getting out there and they're wanting to jig fish standing timber is there a put and then there's no telling what kind of name john's got for this i, I just can't wait <laughs> wait to he hear was probably this an originator of some of these knots uh, but <laughs> what fishing knot do you use to jig fish with well i know it's gonna have some kind of calhoun city name no i just pull me out extra line you know put it through that yeah and pull me out six inches extra i loop it through twice and pull it through and you know if it's got a little a little cor- small loop knot a little, a little small loop knot two times one will hold but i'd always put it in there too i learned that from old timers jig fishing that's the way they done it it always keeps that jig cocked i mean it's it's it sits just like it's supposed to just mm-hmm. like that never right. straight up and down yep and if you sent your knot in there it's going you, you're steady pulling that knot back to to the back trying to keep it like that if you'll tie that knot that jig will set like that no matter what you do to it it ain't nothing you can do to change it if you catch a hundred crappie on that jig it's sitting just like it's supposed to every time that's my knot of choice uh, that's yep. one i've used now for I'm, two or three years yep. and just really uh really like loop it. Knot. Yeah. Easy. easy easy it's easy not to tie two loops and pull it and you can just catch that line on that eye right mm-hmm. there and as it comes up right before it gets to it just pop it Slip right it off. off trim it and you're good to go sickle hook or regular hook regular hook regular. for me 100%. i don't want no sickle hook really uh, i'm a sickle guy a sickle. i don't know i like sickles <laughs> hey but you don't fish thick <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's the time oh i do yeah, my juice is still there yeah, regular, yeah, exactly. regular hook yeah. for me and yeah. i will say that about it it seems to me like a sickle hook you know it just stays hung up so much hmm. worse um, you know, a lot of guys say, well, that ha- that's the reason I want to use a sickle hook because it's easier, you know, maybe to hook, to, yeah. to hook a fish. Mm-hmm. And um, But my experience has been to stay away from those sickle hooks in that thick structure. It's- All right. This is, you know, such a great topic that can go probably on and on and on with. But do you ever tip your jigs with minnows when you're fishing standing timber? Look yeah, at him. Sure do. He's he's shaking before you keep I even that get insurance in your pocket insurance all the time. Yeah, I learned that a long time ago. You keep that insurance policy with you. you. You know, some days you don't have to have nothing. Feel like you can catch them with a cigarette butt. You know, I mean, right. hey, just thump it. Well, you go back tomorrow. They ain't here. They've gone. They ain't gone nowhere. You know, more likely they there. You just, 
you know, and I, I mean, some days you, you they just they bite good. Well, if it's barometric pressure or whatever, you know, you've been there and they just nail it. Some days you put that man on there and you'll feel them just catch hold of it. But they will bite yeah. it when they won't even touch a jig, you know. But they'll get a hold. A lot of days I, I'll take a if I just take a jig head, no skirt, just take that jig head and put that man on there. I'm giving a lot of secrets out here. Absolutely. But, yeah. but I but I take that jig head and hook that man on there and just you know hold it in there. How do you uh, hook that minnow? I hook that minnow right through the lips, real thin through the lips, let the minnow swim. And you know when he's he's going down, he just he steady my fish can't stand it. He's in there, he's got to have him. <laughs> I mean, he'll bite it when he won't yeah. bite nothing else. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you know if the water's clear, I, I don't I don't have to have no big minnow. The only time I use a big minnow is if I'm minnow rigging. You know in the when the water's stained up or in mm-hmm. the springtime. You know uh, most of the time, you know if the water's clear, so I use a little old small minnow. Little tiny minnow, he might not be wanting much. Yeah. Minnows are not minnows. I, I really had an experience. Uh, I would tell you absolutely no minnows, mm-hmm. except for an experience I had here uh, about three weeks ago. Dad and I fished a tournament on Green River Lake in Kentucky, and uh, day one it was two day event. Day one we were sitting in about sixth place, and uh, we'd looked at a lot of good fish that day and just could not make the fish bite. But mm-hmm. uh, some of the leaders that were in that tournament after day one were within, you know, distance of us. We could see them. And I told Dad, I said, I know, you know, the better fish are in that area. We mm-hmm. need to stay put. And I said, we're going to have to go get some minnows. <laughs> and um, we probably had not had minnows in our boat. I th- the last time we had was probably two years ago when we fished Truman. Um, and everybody was saying, you know, minnows are good on Truman. Mm-hmm. You probably need to get it. So we got a few. I think we may have soaked two minnows, you know, the whole trip. Well, this time, day two, uh, we had like a 640 bag on day one. Day two, we had 980 something and Big come back from six to win the tournament. Yeah. Yes. And the minnows. Uh, minnows <laughs> made the difference. Well, out, out here in, a, in that tournament we, we fished the other day, we drop a jig and drop a jig on them right on their nose and they they wouldn't even look at it and i'm steady you know i tie me another and fast or grab another pole and put a different color in there and i i reach in i get that minnow i put that minnow on there i put it right on him that minnow's just sitting there right in front of him right there in front of him like yeah Yeah. we're first thing you're gonna do get it away from that's right you know and he catch hold of it and move it off you know it's a natural I mean, yeah natural it's just instinct, it's just natural yeah. instinct yeah. you know get it away from you yeah and we've got you know kind of over the years especially when you're talking about fishing thick structure uh i think that's one of the reasons we've never been a big fan of minnows because it's hard to keep a minnow you know alive it's Knocking hard to keep yeah mm-hmm. you, you're hanging up you know they're swimming in the stuff they're wrapping you over limbs um so we just really weren't big fans uh rarely and it don't mean i'm planning on starting to use minnows tomorrow but when you better needed, get you some uh, better get you yeah. some <laughs> hey i'll tell you when when it comes down you've invested a lot of money you know to go out there and compete and if you think that's the thing that'll that'll get them caught sometimes mm-hmm. you can go get what you about i know you stuff. guys make a great product just scent i'm one thousand percent believer in scent I absolutely you know that's uh, one thing that was first come out with live scope is oh that you don't need any scent it'll make any difference and I, I mean, I know an experience from me fishing tournaments back in the day that just adds scent. I did it like the last hour of the tournament and, and you know, had a good, strong yeah. finish. But if I'd have done it all day, I'd have probably I, won it. It used to. I thought it was Looking a myth back. when they first come out. with. Yeah. I, I said, that's a myth. That's something somebody's selling. I'll give you an example. Me and a buddy of mine was dead of the winter at Young's Landing. It was who? Bubble Weeks. We was fishing in a river. I had went the day before, and he called me. He said, we're going duck hunting in the morning. I said, no, I'm going fishing. He said, are you crazy? The river's froze. I said, no. And they bit good that afternoon. I mean, limit 30. I got me 30. So we put in, and we went right to that ditch. It was cold. Couldn't get a bite. Could not get a bite. We fished till 10 o'clock. We ain't put a crappie in the box. I thought about that jar. It nipped it. So I said, mm-hmm. Put me one. I put one on there and I dropped it in a drift right up there before you get to Lost Lake in a drift. I dropped in there. I caught my first one. I said, that was an accident. I put me another one on there and I dropped in there. In just a second, I caught another. And Bubba said, Give me one of them pieces of candy. <laughs> I give him one. He put it in there. He catches yeah. one. So we start putting them on there one or two at a time. Bam, bam. On them, it's a cold front come through that night. Hey, we wore them out. And, and and I have in tournaments where we, you know, done really, really well in the winter when it's cold and like Eagle, I won't go without a pocket 
two bottles in my pocket. I, I mean, I won't, I won't put a yeah. jig in without one. I mean, me and Shelton, we, we, we going, we going to use That guy there is a legend of yeah. the sport. Yes, sir. And he have him in his old coverall pocket. Mm-hmm. He'll have a couple packs in there. I mean, we, you just don't put a jig in the water in the winter down at Eddie Lake. You ain't got a nibbling on there. Yeah. yeah. We, we just over the years said it, it can't hurt. You right. Know, yeah. I mean, don't fit the color, the yeah. scent, whatever it is, it don't make no difference. If, if you've got confidence it's going to work and it does, you get you a bottle of them and use it. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you something that you guys have probably seen. We've I've talked been about using it. I like lot. it. Man, they're nice. I like these, it. these eye hole jigs. Um, you know, it's got the cavity there for you to place that slab bite down inside. Uh, whatever, if you don't use slab bites, maybe Berkeley nibbles or whatever, yeah. whatever your brand is. Scent. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, the stuff. Slap it in there, man. It sticks in there for a long time with those jig heads, and uh, it, it makes a difference. We've got – there's a Fish Eat Live episode that, that Kirby and Ham and I did on Cave Run Lake, and you'll get to see the difference it made uh, that day as I was just out catching him, you know, lights out, and he was not tipping with a slab bite, and I was, and finally looks over and says – Dude, why didn't you tell me what you've been using? Yeah. Give me some of those. And he starts using yeah. them, starts catching even, even it's what, what can it hurt? That's yeah. kind of you know, my yeah. thought is. Even back when two when, more fish. when he was using, like a lot of uh, hollow tubes, you know, I, I'd take a, a, a syringe, you know, like a needle syringe, and take the needle out, and I'd pour, take the plunger out, pour me 12 or 15 in it, put the plunger back in it, and stick it up Shoot in em. that hollow yeah. and fill it up. It'll just blow that blow that tube up you know and as you know i'd use those sparkle ones and as you jig it you'd see them little sparkles coming off of it i don't know it was a myth but i caught fish so I confidence I, even I, you know you go back to the old thing about fishing yeah, with confidence absolutely. i knew i was gonna catch them when i you know right how much and you guys could probably attest to this as well man if you've got confidence in in yeah. that then yeah that goes a long way yeah you know and chris said it you know is what can it hurt and you know I have them everywhere in my boat from, you know, the slab bites and different yeah, colors yeah. of them. And I, I like experimenting <laughs> sometimes and I use them I, and I've used them for years from pulling jigs along line. And you might not think, why mm. would you add scent to, to a jig being pulled that fast? Yep. It comes back. What can it hurt? What can it hurt? That's yeah. right. I've seen it make it one difference in a tournament that, that we put niblets and slab bites on, on jigs as, as we were been pulling them. Yeah. And we started catching fish like mm-hmm. crazy. Now I can't say, yeah, that was well, hundred percent. But you can't say it wasn't. But you either. can't now, say it wasn't. Now I'm and, looking and back, know, like I wish I'd have done it earlier. Yeah, and you know, you know I, I'm not stuck on one color. A lot of times I get, I was always on chartreuse or glitter, but now I get to thinking about the red ones. I put that red or pink on there, you know, and it gives you a little different color on the tip of that bait. I don't know. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's, it don't hurt nothing. Hey, that's yeah. what I love about that eye hole jig. You know, you yeah. take that's a that's a pink jig head there, but you fill it up with chartreuse, and you got on right. those chartreuse eyes on a pink jig head. So can't have too at, much color. No, that's the way <laughs> we look at yeah. it. You know, you, you're adding some some good colors, some bling bling in there. Some bling. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about you know starting out with fishermen. We're fishing the standard timber. What would be, let's say, five color combinations that if you were starting out that you would not go without. Orange and chartreuse, chartreuse and orange, orange and chartreuse, and chartreuse and orange. No, no, no. I, and chartreuse I, and orange? Yeah. Yeah, orange and chartreuse. I, I like a solid chartreuse. I, I mean, a solid chartreuse with an orange head. I like orange and chartreuse. And I like, if I'm using a hair jig, I like uh, blue and silver mm. or blue and gray, whatever you want to call it. Blue and gray hair jig. That's, that's two more. You got them in you. Red and white. Oh, that's that's an old. I, I, that's, that's that's a yep. good color. A red yeah. and white. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. Back in the day, man, and, that and, was and, about everywhere you went. Everybody and wanted red and white. Lime and chartreuse. Yeah. Ronnie Caps and Steve Coleman won more money with a lime and chartreuse than the bank could hold. Yeah. Just a lime chartreuse to lead head. It's all you'd ever see on the hooks. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a good color. Chris? Black and chartreuse. Black and chartreuse. I, I knew somebody would say it. Chartreuse, love it. Um, and it I'll tell a, you something that goes on: black and chartreuse and yellow and chartreuse are two colors. No one hardly uses yellow and chartreuse. That's a good, great color to use in stained water, uh, all the way up to clear water. I'll tell you what, I love to use with those is a red head. If you can get a red head, the contrast in that black to red and that yellow to red. I don't know what it is, but fish love it. I uh, love fishing uh, lime green. We call it wizard glow in a crappie magnet. You know, it's green with a chartreuse tail. Right. Um, I like a color we got. It's, made, it's called Dude. 
Uh, it's almost like a greenish, you know, kind of brownish tint. It's got a little bit of red fleck in it. Turkish, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good color. And that butler gold is hard to beat. It's like a, a shimmery green, you know, with some mm-hmm. flash in it with a white tail. And I uh, uh, love those colors. Um, one thing I will say about this, and I'm going to let, I'm like John, I'm going to let some, some hints out of the bag here. Uh, the only time that I use a product that, that's not a crappie magnet product in my boat uh, is I use Rockport Rattler jig heads on occasion. Uh, when the bike gets really finicky and fish that are tucked extremely in tight to structure, especially brush piles, not so much standing timber, but you know, root balls or blow ins or wash ins. Uh, when I'm fishing those, sometimes that Rockport Rattler, that little bit of sound, um, that little bit of vibration that comes from that can make all the difference in the world. So. Uh, something something to think about there man we've got a lot of information that you guys have donated to the crop we, connection we're just glad today. you didn't write none of it down man <laughs> <laughs> we didn't write i didn't write anything down <laughs> Dave bernie will go back and watch this again yeah absolutely <laughs> guys i got the new crop connection sun hoodies on just got them Sweet. today i've been waiting on them uh another thing that I, and i've said it as a tip before is if you're using live sonar i like dark, dark colors have you noticed that yet mm-hmm. on shirts have you used a darker color compared to a light? No. Try it. Your screen won't reflect as bad. Really? Yeah, so that's a really quick secret, and that's why these are dark. And you think, man, I don't want to wear a dark piece of clothing mm-hmm. in the summertime. So you're getting but I reflection it, off that A white shirt, that. if I have somebody get in my boat right now, and we're casting using live scope or chasing them down, whatever, I would just about make them change shirts to a dark huh. color. I so this is why it. these shirts are dark for the summertime fishing. These are sun hoodies. And we have them at half price right now. That was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Well, we don't let the, we don't let <laughs> you hold that. Sales off. Yeah, but sale went off. They're on uh, Crappie Forever's website. Great group of guys. We've got a lot of good information that's going to come this weekend about Crappie Forever and the, some of the things they're doing with Crappie Magnet yeah. and B&M and Cornfield Fishing. So make sure you, you tune in, subscribe, like, and share it out. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. We Thank did. you guys. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Hey, it's been fun, Appreciate dude. Appreciate you having Thank me. you. Both legends of the sport. Until next time, Brad Chapel here. Chris Mann. John Harrison. Holla. Out of my front, big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel my worries drift away.